Hello everyone, welcome back to Pabli. So in this video, we are going to understand how to send Google Calendar event notifications on Slack. So are you also using Google Calendar for your business? Then this video is definitely for you. So over here, I'm doing the same and I wish that as soon as a new event is created in my Google Calendar, automatically my team on Slack should be notified about that event. For this, we are going to create a connection between Google Calendar and Slack. To create this connection without knowing any programming or coding language, language, we are going to use Pabli Connect. So if you also wish to learn this process step by step, then let me take you to my computer screen. Welcome to my screen. So as you know, in this video, we are going to learn how to send Google Calendar event notifications on Slack. For this, I've already opened the landing page of Pabli simply by searching pabli.com slash connect in my browser. It is very easy. So as soon as we'll open the landing page of Pabli, we are going to get two options. One is sign in and the another one is sign up for free. So if you are a new user, you can click on sign up for free and you are going to get 100 of tasks free every month. But I'm an existing user, so I'm going to click on sign in right over here. And now it is opening all Pabli apps. Over here you can see all the tools and applications offered by Pabli. But in today's video we are going to use Pabli Connect because we are connecting different applications. So I'm going to click on access now right over here. And now it is opening my dashboard and to start with the automation we are going to click on this button which is create workflow and now it is asking me the workflow name and the folder I want to save the workflow in. So I want to save the workflow in this folder which is automations and I want to name my workflow as how to send Google Calendar event notifications on Slack and then we are going to click on this button which is create. And now it is opening the most important window of our automation that is our workflow window. This is the most important window because we have triggered an action in this. Trigger means when this happens, an action means do this. By this you can understand that the trigger is the commander for the workflow and actions follow the commands. And as you know that we can have only a single commander but multiple followers. So over here we can have only a single trigger but multiple actions following the commands of our trigger. So now I'm going to select my trigger application which is Google Calendar because I want that as soon as a new event is created in my Google Calendar, automatically my workflow should be triggered so I'm going to search for Google Calendar right over here and then we are going to select it and now for the trigger event we are going to select it as new event and now we are going to click on connect and as you can see that it is asking me to add a new connection or select the existing connection so if you have already connected your Google Calendar account with your Pabli's workflow you can click on select existing connection and then save but if you haven't you have to follow me click on add a new connection and then sign in with Google and now after selecting my account, it is asking me for some permissions. So I'm going to click on allow and give Pabli all the permissions it is asking for because my data is secure with Pabli. You can also click on allow Pabli safe. And as soon as we are going to click on allow, you can see that we have successfully connected our Google Calendar account with our Pabli's workflow. And now it is asking me to select the calendar. So over here you can see that I've created multiple calendars, but I'm going to create this automation for this, which is Pabli. So I'm going to select the same right over here, which is Pabli. And now after selecting my calendar, I'm going to click on save and send test request. But before clicking on this, I'll let you know that Google Calendar is a pooling based application and it says this trigger will check for new data in 10 minutes. So pooling based applications means that this application will not check for new data instantly. It will take some amount of time to check for new data. And here in the case of Google Calendar, it will take 10 minutes. So now as soon as I'm going to click on save and send test request, probably will capture the latest response or the last response made in my Google Calendar account. So first I'm going back to my calendar and over here I'm going to do a submission so that Pabli can capture that. So to do this submission I'm going to create a new event. So to create a new event I'm going to select the date which is 9th of July and over here it is asking me for the title. So I'm going to enter the title as know about automation. So I'm going to enter it and now over here you can see that it has selected the all day. So I'm going to click on add time because I want this event only for two or three hours. So for the start time, I'm going to keep it as 2 p.m. And then for the end time, I'm going to keep it as 5 p.m. So here the event is of 3 hours. And now I wish to add a Google meeting link right over here. So I'm going to add it. And now after doing all of this, I'm going to click on save. 
so here you can see that we have successfully created this event which is know about automation over here is the time the date and the google meeting link so with this we have successfully did our test submission and now we are going back to our workflow and now i'm going to click on save and send test request and as soon as i'm going to click on this yes you can see probably captured the last response in our google calendar which is know about automation event over here you can see the time zone the start date and time we are going to move on forward over here you can see the meeting link we are going to move on forward over here you can see end date and time so with this our trigger step is successful but before moving to our action step i'll let you know that over here it is saying this trigger will check for new date and 10 minutes so if you wish to increase this time you can go on this three dots and then set trigger time so now you can set the trigger time according to you between 24 hours and 10 minutes. So I'm going to keep it as 10 minutes only. And now before moving on forward, I'll let you know. Over here you can see that this is the start date and time. But as you can see that this is in not a proper format. So I'm going to make it in a desired and a proper format. So for that, I'm going to add an action step, which is date time formatter by Pabli. So I'm going to search for date time formatter by Pabli. And as you can see the same, so I'm going to select it. It is a feature by Pabli, which helps you to format the date and time. And now for the action event, we are going to select it as format date with time zone. And then we are going to click on connect. And as you can see that it is asking me for the date. So I'm going to map the date right over here. So mapping is a method by Pabli, which means inserting the data from the previous step. And as you know, our previous step was the trigger step where we selected google calendar as our trigger application so we are going to map the details from the response of our trigger application only and as soon as i'm going to map these details automatically my details will turn dynamic and change with every new event created in my google calendar so for that i'm going to search for date right over here and as you can see start date and time and end date and time so first i'm going to create this for start date and time so i'm going to select it and now as you can see that i've mapped it and now this has become a dynamic information and now it is asking me for the from format so I'm going to leave it as same. We are directly going to move on for the to format. So I want the desired format right over here. So I'm going to select the same. And as you can see that this is my desired format, which is date, month, year, hour, minutes and seconds. So I'm going to select it. And now after selecting this, I'm going to select the from time zone. So as you know, the time zone was Asia, Kolkata only. So I'm going to select it. And then for the two time zone also, I'm going to select Asia, Kolkata. So I'm going to select it and then we are going to click on save and send test request. And yes, you can see 9th of July over here, you can see the time 2 p.m. So I'm going to open my calendar and over here, you can see 9th of July 2 p.m. So with this, uh, this action step is successful. And now we have to do this same for the end date and time too. So instead of again repeating all of this, I'm just going to clone this step. So for that, I'm going to click on this three dots and then clone step. And yes, you can see that we have successfully cloned this step. So I'm going to open it. And now instead of this start date and time, I'm going to map the end date and time right over here so that this can be created for the end date and time too. So here you can see end date time. So I'm going to map it. Rest all is same and directly I'm going to click on save and send test request. And yes, over here, you can see that we have received the end date and time, which is 9th of July 2024. And over here is the time 5 p.m. So with this, our both date and time action formatter steps are completed. And now we are going to add another action step so that I can send these details to my team on Slack. So I'm going to search for Slack. And as you can see, so I'm going to select it. And now for the action event, I'm going to select it as send channel message. And then we are going to click on connect. And as you can see, again, it is asking me for the same. So if you have already connected your Slack account, you can click on select existing connection. But if you haven't, you have to follow me again, click on add a new connection and then connect with Slack. And over here, it is asking me for the token type. So over here in the help desk, you can see that it is saying enter the token type as user or bot. So over here, if you wish to learn more about this, you can click on this learn more. But I'll let you know some points that if you wish that the message should be sent with the help of a bot, then you can select the token type as as board. But if you wish to send it as a user, you can select the token type as user. So I'm going to select it as board right over here and then we are going to click on save. 
and now over here you can see that it is asking me for some permissions so i'm going to click on allow and give pabli all the permissions it is asking for because as you know that our data is secure with pabli so as soon as we are going to click on allow you can see that we have successfully connected our slack account with our pabli's workflow and now it is asking me for the channel name so over here you can see that i have multiple channels in my slack account so over here i'm going to open my slack and as you can see that this is the channel i'm going to create this automation for which is new events so i'm going to select the same right over here which is new events so i'm going to search for same which is new events and as you can see new events so i'm going to select this and now after selecting my channel it is asking me for the message so i want the message to be hello team and then this just a quick reminder about our important and over here you can see event name in curly brackets so we are going to map the name of our event right over here so i'm going to search for it and as you can see know about automation so i'm going to map it so now it has become just a quick reminder about our important know about automation event over here are the event details event title start date and time end date and time meeting link i am looking forward to a productive event best regards so here you can see that i have also left spaces in front of these details so again i am going to map it so over here i am doing mapping because i want these details to turn dynamic and change with every new message sent so here for the event title again i am going to map it so i am going to search for it right over here and then we are going to map it know about automation then for the start date and time we are going to map it from the date time format or action steps over here you can see the start date and time so I'm I'm going to map it 9th of July 2 p.m. and for the end date and time, I'm going to map it to 9th of July 5 p.m. and over here you can see the meeting link. So I'm going to search for it right over here and as you can see the link, so I'm going to map it too. And now after mapping all these details, now these details have turned dynamic and I've successfully completed this message step. And now you are going to move on forward. It is asking me for the image URL, image alt text. So as you can see that this is not the required details, so I'm going to leave it as blank. And then we are going to move on forward. And as you can see that now it is asking me for the bot name. So I want the bot name to be new event details. So I'm going to enter same right over here. And then we are going to move on forward. It is asking me for the bot icon. So as you can see that you can attach a URL right over here if you wish to add a bot icon. So I don't wish to add a bot icon. So I'm going to move on forward directly. And now it is asking me for the auto expand link. So I'm going to keep it as true. For link username and channel names, I'm going to keep it as true. And for the reply broadcast i'm going to keep it as false and now it is asking me for the thread message id so again as you can see that this is not the required field so i'm going to leave it and then we are going to click on save and send test request and yes you can see that we have received the positive response that we have successfully sent this message so i'm going to open my slack and yes you can see the message has been sent over here are all the details hello team just a quick reminder about our important event know about automation event details over here you can see the event title start date and time end date and time and the meeting link i'm looking forward to a productive event best regards so as you can see with this our workflow is successful but i'll just test the workflow once and this time i'm going to To give you a real time example so to do this i'm going to open my google calendar and over here i'm going to create a new event so for that i'm going to create this event for 15th of july so i'm going to select it i'm going to name the event as automation and ai this time and now i'm going to add the time as over here i'm going to select it as 12 pm to 2 pm so i'm going to select it and now i'm going to add the meeting link and yes you can see that i've added it and now i'm going to click on save And yes you can see that we have successfully created the event on 15th of July 12 to 2 pm and over here you can see the meeting link too So with this we have successfully did our test submission and now Google Calendar will send the details of our submission to our workflow Pabli will capture the response trigger the workflow further will send a new slack message to our slack channel so i'm directly going to open my slack channel and check that if a new message has been sent or not so this time we are not going back to our workflow and clicking on save and send test request i'll wait for few minutes and then i'm going to directly open my slack channel so i'm going to open my slack channel And yes you can see that we have received the new message over here you can see hello team just a quick reminder about our important automation and ai event here are the event details event title automation and ai over here you can see the start date and time the end date and time which is the same 15th of july 12 pm to 2 pm where you can see the meeting link and with this our workflow is successful and i'll just summarize the workflow for you once for a trigger application we selected google calendar for the trigger event i selected 
created new event for the action application we use date time format of first because i wanted to format the date in my desired format and then for the action application we selected slack and then for the action event we selected send channel message because i wanted that as soon as the new event is created in my google calendar automatically the dates and the time should be formatted and a new message should be sent to my slack channel to notify my team and yes we were successful with our workflow over here you can see the two messages i sent during this video with the help of my workflow one was for know about automation event and one was for automation and ai event you can see these are the same events i created right over here in my google calendar so if you have any doubts related to the video or the workflow you can directly comment on this video and for your reference i'll just clone the workflow and share the workflow link in the description box so that you can access my workflow thank you for watching not only these applications but with the help of pabli you can integrate many more applications so now if you have any doubts you can reach us at support@pabli.com if you have any queries you can reach us at forum.pabli.com and if you have any pricing related issues you can follow this website and if you find our videos helpful do like and subscribe our channel thank you for watching